Hey crafting besties! Today's video is going to be one of my last fall harvest Thanksgiving themed DIYs but it is packed full of super simple and easy ideas and a lot of them you can do last minute. It's also very budget friendly. A lot of the items either came from Dollar Tree or were things that I had at my house already. So if you're ready to create something fun, let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. DIY number one, I have a vintage window on my mantel in my living room and I have this grapevine wreath hung from it. And as you can see, it has spring florals on it. So. <laughs> I haven't changed it out since spring. I don't know why. All I'm doing here is just removing the florals. And then I need to switch out that pink ribbon for something more harvest fall colored. And I'm just measuring it out right here. And this isn't really a DIY necessarily. It's more just kind of me showing you how I decorate my home. So I'm putting in, these are all Dollar Tree florals and I'm just kind of cutting them off and sticking them inside the grapevine wreath. I am not hot gluing because I usually switch out my wreath with each season, but um, so yeah, anyway, I'm just tucking in florals here and there until I think it looks good. And this is how it turned out. I really love it. The signs that you see on both sides of the window are ones that I made in previous videos and I, I just really think the colors pop so nicely off my mantle. Hey y'all, today's video is part of the 4th Friday Open Playlist and I host it every single month on the 4th Friday with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY and our guest host this month is Emily from Farm Term Chic. I'm going to have the links to their channels and a link to the playlist in the description box below. I hope you check out everybody on the playlist. I hope you like and subscribe and comment. That, that'd be awesome if you did. All right, let's get back to the DIYs. For DIY number two, I'm gonna show you how to make a no-sew pillow. I got this zipper from Hobby Lobby and I have these two placemats from Dollar Tree. That liquid stitch is from Hobby Lobby. And all you have to do is just, Captain's helping. <laughs> all you have to do is just put a line of liquid stitch down and put the placemat on each side of it like that, like you see me doing there and you're gonna kind of let that dry a little bit before you like start tugging on it or anything. Now I'm tucking down the little ends of the zipper. You can cut them, but I'm gonna show you in a second what happens. On this particular pillow, I did not cut them and I'm just using some Dollar Tree clamps to hold it down. And then, as you see, you're going to run a bead of glue down and you're going to press the placemats together. I'm using clamps because, again, you want it to stay together, but you don't want it to be glued to anything else. So I use these silicone clamps and they work wonderfully to do this. I think I mentioned, I got it from this zipper from Hobby Lobby. It's $2.99, I think. And here you see me cutting off the ends. You can use, not your good scissors, but you can use scissors to do that. And here I'm trying to use all that liquid stitch that I can. And again, I'm just gluing down one end of the placemat to one side and I'll glue the placemat end to the other side. You see what I'm doing there. And as you can see, I put glue all the way around and then I'm, Captain, get out the way. <laughs> then I'm gonna just lay the placemats together, trying to make sure that they're all even and use my clamps to secure them in place while they dry. To finish it out, I'm, you just have to stuff it. I'm using some stuffing from an old pillow that had a hole in it and no sense in throwing it out when I can use the stuffing for something else. And the nice thing about this type of pillow is it zips so you can remove the stuffing and store it and not be storing a bulky pillow. Now here's where I messed up. I had cut the end of the zipper, the bottom of the zipper, and I didn't give myself a little bit of room to kind of tuck it in and glue it. And so I even had Marvin helping me, Captain tries to help. I, we, we finally got it back on, but I'm just telling you, be careful. <laughs> And this is how they turned out. And again, the thing that I love most about this, aside from the fact that it was super easy and you didn't even need to sew a thing, is the fact that when you go to store it, there's no bulk. 
you just take out the stuffing and fold it flat, tuck it in your tote box that you have all your fall decor in, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And they turned out so cute too. It's really easy to do. Now there is drying time of course, but super easy to do. In DIY number three, I'm showing you that you can just use everyday items that you find in the house and make them super cute. This is just a piece of scrap cardboard that I had and probably came from an Amazon box or something. And I'm cutting out this triangle shape because I'm gonna be making a pumpkin pie garland. And then I just cut out these little triangles and you can make them the size that you want and the shape that you want. And yeah, once I have them all cut out, then I'm gonna paint them. I painted on the crust using two different colors, kind of like a brownish color and then a linen color that was more of a tannish color. And while it turned out okay, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for. For the pumpkin pie part of this, I'm just using some terracotta paint and you can use whatever color orange you want. And I'm just painting on the pumpkin pie. But that crust just wasn't quite the color I was looking for. So I ended up getting some folk art matte paint in the color starlight gold and that's what I'm using for the crust now here it looks a little yellowish but you know in real life I thought it I thought it was looking pretty good I did mix it with a little bit of um, Waverly chalk paint in the color white to kind of blend it a little bit more to add the dollop of whipped cream I have this circular this round sponge brush and I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in color white and I'm making a little circle as you see there and then I'm taking some gray paint I think it's Parisian gray and I'm just kind of swirling it in I'm trying to give it a little bit of dimension and so it just doesn't look like a white circle of paint <laughs> and to string it I'm showing you here I put some masking tape on the end to kind of make it a point and I'm going to go ahead and string on six beads because I want to bead on each side of my pumpkin pies. And then to attach it all together, I'm putting some hot glue down towards the top of the pumpkin pie on the back. And then I'm laying the jute twine across it and putting, I'm sliding the beads as I go, as you can see me doing here. And that's just how I'm attaching it all to the jute twine. This garland turned out cute. I like it. And the fun thing about it is you're using something that you would have either thrown away or recycled. And now you're putting it to good use and making something super cute for your house. I just put it around this tear tray and decorated the rest of the tear tray with some other items that I've made in previous videos. We're on to DIY number four, and I am taking some Waverly wax in the color antique and I'm staining the tops of these acorns. These are wood acorns that I got from Dollar Tree. I forget how many come in a pack, but um, I don't use all that you see here because some mess up and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. I, I don't mind showing y'all my mess ups because that's how we all learn, right? I'm going to be painting three of the little acorns with this, I think it's black cherry. It's a really pretty deep kind of burgundy color. And I'm painting three with the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And three with the folk art paint in the color linen. And the final three I'm painting with Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. Okay. Well, I'm showing you the acorns, but I've seen people like just screw in screw eyes into these little wood pieces. It wasn't working for me. So I had to take a nail, a small nail and kind of like make myself a little pilot hole. So I've just got it clamped in there and making myself a little pilot hole by hammering in the nail. And then of course, removing the nail and there's the screw eyes and the acorns. <laughs> so when I was doing this, I mean, it was easy ish, but also there was times that I had to use like, um, not pliers. Well, maybe it's pliers. I don't know what it was, what they're, what the tool's called. Anyway, I was screwing it in and it broke off the head or the eye of the screw eye thing. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I would have had more acorns. Some broke. Anyway, it is what it is. And I actually did that stuff before I painted it because now they're done. They're painted. 
and they're ready to string onto some jute twine. And I just use a little bit of masking tape to make a point and use that to thread it through all of the acorns. And I laid it all out. And <laughs> look at socks. It was just totally cracking me up. I didn't even need to lay it out like this, but he was trying to be a big helper. I have it all strung up and now I'm attaching it to that part of my mantle. I thought this was going to be a bigger impact kind of project. I mean, you can tell what it is, but, um, well now both cats are just wondering what I'm doing. And I just put masking tape to hold it onto the side because the little Dollar Tree suction cups kept falling off. This is how the acorn garland turned out. Again, I was hoping for a little bit bigger impact you know, project, but I think it turned out super cute and I really love the colors that I used. I just think they're, they're, you know, um, a good blend of colors, a good blend of fall colors. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Whew. Hey, I wanted to grab your attention and let you know that I have a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I run it with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. The link is going to be in the description box below. I hope you join. And if you do join, please be sure and post a picture of a project that you're currently working on. We'd love to cheer you on and support your creativity. Okay, back to the video. DIY number five is going to be a little turkey sign. And I saw this online and I can't remember where if I remember where or if I find it I will put it in the description box below if you know where I saw it or you see something similar let me know I'd be happy to give credit where credit is due so I printed out the sign that I saw and I just traced out I cut out the uh, the turkey part so that I could trace it onto this wood circle that I got from Dollar Tree and now I'm just using a, a brown color to paint in the turkey body and I'm using that folk art linen color to paint in, I guess, the turkey breast, <laughs> the turkey chest. Now it's time to paint on the turkey leaves. And I'm just going to be painting on, I think, three red, did I say leaves? <laughs> turkey feathers. I don't even know what I said. So I'm painting on three turkey feathers in the color red. And two turkey feathers. <laughs> in a yellow color. I think I said leaves earlier. And last but not least, I'm painting in the final two turkey feathers with this orange color. Before I got to this part, I asked Marvin, I said, "What, do you, honey, what do you think this is? What does it look like? And he was like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, wasn't really looking like a turkey at that point, but I'm filling in. I was going to leave the wood round natural wood but I don't know I just went in with this Waverly chalk paint in the color moss to just add another color to it to add on the eyes I'm using this little sponge dauber thing and I'm just adding two round white circles and then I'm taking some black paint and I'm using a smaller little dauber thing and adding in the two eyes and I took a yellow color and I'm going to be creating a beak. I'm just making a, an upside down triangle shape. And I'm sorry, I don't really remember all the colors. I just kind of start looking at the colors I have and start, <laughs> start making it. And then I forget what you call this thing, but it's that red thing. The, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, I'm painting that on right now. And I'm using my little mini Bodabra. Um, if you didn't know, the big Bodabra is like 20 bucks at Hobby Lobby, but the mini Bodabra is like 14, but it's in the Christmas section right by the Christmas ribbon and it's 50% off right now. So yeah, anyway, making a little tiny bow and I'm just hot gluing that little bow to the corner there. I, I kind of feel like it needs to be a little bit fuller bow, but hey, that's what we got so far. I used my Cricut to print out this decal that says hi. I was going to freehand hello on there and I was going to do a couple other things and it just wasn't working out. So I went with the decal, added it to the sign. And this is how this little sign turned out. I could hang it on my front door, you know, because I usually put a wood circle in the middle of my grapevine wreath out there. But um, I, I want to add more to the bow, do something a little bit more with the bow. And I'm not sure I'm entirely happy with the word hi there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think I should do to it? What I should add to it? Give me all your thoughts on that. 
Thank y'all so much for joining me today as I crafted. I really enjoyed the company. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I have a goal that by the end of the year, I'm hoping to get to 5,000. You know, it's a stretch goal, but we can get there. I can get there with your help. Anyways, also, if you could tell me in the um, comments below which one was your favorite DIY, that'd be awesome too. And I can't think of anything else. So um, I guess I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget, if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or anything like that, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.